Hello and welcome to the Odds Profit Podcast with me, Simon Winter, and your co-host, Ian Bright. Hello, hello. It's that time of the week again where we prime our powers of prediction in an attempt to find you the best betting tips and picks ahead of the weekend's Premier League action. How are you, Ian? I'm very well, Simon. How are you? I'm okay. Tell me something interesting to boost my enthusiasm levels. Biffy Clyro, they're a Scottish band. Did you ever hear of them? I did. Yeah, they had a pen named after Cliff Richards uh, called Cliffy Byro. So they reversed the B and the C and Biffy Clyro was born. Well, my enthusiasm levels are topped up. I can tell. I thank you. Look, anyway, let's get the housekeeping out of the way first. This podcast is about betting and gambling, so you must be aged 18 or over to listen in. And if you do follow our tips this weekend, then please gamble responsibly. As always, there are 10 fixtures to analyse, so let's get... Actually, first up, Ian, before we get cracking, Mm -hmm. let's recap last week's Premier League tips. I'll go first. Go for it. Okay, so in Crystal Palace versus Newcastle, I had both teams to score. A 3 to 4 or 1.75. That landed. That landed, Ian. Hurrah. Wolves double chance and under four goals to be scored when they played Leeds also landed at 11 to 10 or 2.1. How'd you like those apples? That's yeah, good. 2.1. Yes, nice. 2.1. Excellent. Uh, my third bet was under two and a half goals or 10 to el- at 10 to 11 rather mm-hmm. or 1.91 in Southampton versus Burnley, which failed miserably as both teams went hell for leather in a 2 2 draw, pulsating enthralling and groin grabbingly good were just some of the adjectives used to describe the game in the times <laughs> yeah brilliant uh, how else did you get on um i had city to win and both teams to score at brighton at 12 to 5 or 3.4 3.4 yeah yeah decent very decent and then i had a, a kind of my weekend collapsed on sunday i had over two and a half goals in west ham versus spurs which didn't land at 1.8 it was a bitty 1-0 for the, ha- 1-0 win for the Hammers. Yeah. Um, Anything I, else go on on Sunday? Or? Yeah, there was another game on. I forget what the score was and who was playing exactly, but I know I had, I think, Liverpool minus one corners. And they were out-cornered by Manchester the mighty Manchester United. They were out-cornered by 6-3. to three. That's all I remember from that game. Right, okay. Well, look, I'll, I'll put you out of your misery and just go back through what I had as well. So um, on Friday at 8 o'clock, we had the Arsenal-Villa game at the Emirates. Aubameyang as any time goal scorer at 10 to 11 or 2.1 so we had this thanks to an Aubameyang penalty and that finished 3-1 and uh, then at 12.30 on Saturday we had Chelsea versus Norwich at Stamford Bridge Chelsea win to nil <laughs> we all know how, how that ended <laughs> 7-0 imagine that um, well actually it's easy to imagine it's Norwich because, because it happened yeah and it did um, so then on Saturday at 3pm we had the Everton versus Watford game Goodison Park over two and a half goals, 10 to 11 or 1.91. We also had this. It finished 5 2 to Watford after they drank some sort of magic potion in the last 15 <laughs> minutes. Um, it was crazy. Um, and then Sunday at 2 pm, Brentford versus Leicester. Uh, both teams to score in over two and a half goals, 11 to 8 um, or 2.38. That was a juicy one. That finished 2 1, so we had this as well. Great work. Yeah, and then um, we had the Man United Liverpool uh, game as well. So we, I actually had over 2.5. Sorry, can I just stop you there? I just want to leave the room. We'll be back and just. Yeah, no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's too hard to talk about, isn't it? Um, but you must grin and bear it. How you done? Um, over 2.5 goals and both teams to score 10 11 or 1.91. We didn't have it because um, both teams didn't score. And uh, also, if you wanted to, I said both teams to score in the first half at 11-4, 3.75. Again, we didn't have it. Um, but yeah, look, we also had a, a tasty treble. Just going to throw it out there. Obama Yang and Mo Salah to score any time. Goal before the 30th minute into Chelsea versus Norwich game. And that came in at 6.89. 6.89. What yeah. a way to round up. So, I mean... There must be about a 70% hit rate there. Yeah, easily, yeah. I think with the two of our uh, games, we easily managed 70-80%. Let's not so, do the actual maths, just in case we're well Matt, off. Maths hurt my brain. It's a good estimate, Ian, a good estimate. Yeah, that's good. Um, that's the end of our roundup. So let's jump into part one, Ian. Woo! It's the <laughs> lunchtime kickoff. Leicester versus Arsenal. Two resurgent teams full of momentum and beans meet at the King Power Stadium in the weekend's tasty lunchtime tussle. I'm going for both teams to score in this one at 4-6 to six or 1.67 and I will tell you why after these messages from our sponsors. We don't have any messages from our sponsors, Ian. We don't, <laughs> we don't have any sponsors. 
Okay. I just wanted to say that. Well, look, I mean, one of these days, Simon, one of these days. It might happen. Yeah. So um, what are you saying, Derek? Okay, so Leicester seem to have hit their strides from an from a, an attacking perspective. They've hit 12 goals in their last four games in all competitions, and they've put four past Man United in their last Premier League home game. Big deal, I hear you cry. <laughs> but still, Arsenal, meanwhile, are suddenly unbeaten in eight games, six of which were in the league. Where on earth did that run come from? It was weird, man. I'm telling you, talk about starting slow and finishing fast. Witchcraft. Mm. It's the only explanation. It is approaching Halloween, so witchcraft is my explanation, Ian. Mm. They're playing with enough confidence to notch against a Leicester defence that has conceded twice on average per 90 minutes over their last four assignments. The Foxes have scored in eight successive Premier League meetings with the Gunners, however, and with Vardy, Madison and Tielemans all carrying considerable threat in the final third, both teams to score looks a goer here. And again, it's at 4-6 to six or one67 not the biggest odds in the world, but something... No, it's a nice little bet builder. Could kick off your weekend. Exactly. Nice one, Simon. So what do you have up first for us, Ian? Yeah, I'm um, in Turf Moor on Saturday at 3pm. Um, so we're looking at the Burnley versus Brentford game. Um, now, Simon, we actually have to go back, right, 24 years to 1997. Oasis is probably just at their prime, right, when Brentford last beat Burnley. That's a long time ago. Isn't it? Now, you can argue, though, that their league position has been somewhat deserved um, this year thanks to a fantastic start in the campaign. In recent weeks, we've seen their form dip, having come up against the likes of Chelsea, Leicester and West Ham. And their league position of 12th is starting to look a little bit more realistic as they settle into a mid-table zone where they'll have to find some consistency now before slipping any further. Uh, Burnley, on the other hand, have had a horrible start to the campaign. They're sitting 18th and have failed to win a single game so far. Um, just um, I think they're sitting at four points at the moment. With like, it's not good li- enough. It's no. not good enough, Burnley. Yeah, look, they couldn't even beat Norwich a few weeks ago, which <laughs> resulted in yeah nil nil draw, and that was. And uh, they were held to a two two draw against Southampton last week as well. So look, it's a hard one to call. Okay, um, I suppose you do kind of have to look at that history that Brentford um, just haven't beaten Burnley in so long. But due to Burnley, Brentford's recent form declining as well, it's hard to really see them win straight out but I think there's plenty here to suggest they'll get something from this uh, fixture so I'm going to go with a low scoring draw but one team could snatch a late winner uh, this is why I'm going with a number of goals bet uh, for there to be 2 or 3 goals coming in you're looking at 20 to 21 or 1.93 which is a nice solid bet as well yeah 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 so um, who's travelling to Anfield this week Simon and well. are we looking at Another success of Mo Salah goal to extend his record. <laughs> well, I certainly hope so, Ian, from my perspective. <laughs> I hope he just continues to set the world alight, that Mo. Ruffle his little hair for him. <laughs> he could do um, definitely sponsorship for hairspray adverts. <laughs> he could. Not me. <laughs> no. But maybe Mo. <laughs> but you're right. Look, I'm off to Merseyside where a rampant looking Liverpool play Brighton. I actually expected the Seagulls to give Man City a much stiffer test last weekend. Though their 4-1 defeat suggests that they should find the going just as tough against Liverpool on Saturday. Albion actually took four points from Liverpool last season and even won on their last trip to Anfield in February. But the landscape has shifted, Ian. Down is up and up is down. It's a wonky well place to be. It is. Well, just like last week, this feels like an any positive bet in Liverpool's direction is a winner sort of thing. Though naturally a home win at 1-4 is best ignored and treated like the horrible, if understandable, price it is. It's like the ugly sister. A little bit, it is, yes. I'm ten- tempted to go for Liverpool to score over 2.5 team goals at 10-11 to 11 or 1.91 here. They are averaging 3 goals per league game this season and they hit the net 10 times in their last two outings combined, though against two I forget. Um, Liverpool to score in both halves uh, is 5-6 to six or 1.83 which is something they've done in 78% of their league fixtures so far that also caught my eye so take your pick from those two yeah that's really good Simon thanks very much what's next excellent yeah so I'm actually going over to the Etihad uh, for the Man City versus Crystal Palace game so we have to go back to December 2018 when we last saw Crystal Palace edge a 3-2 victory over City. When their Oasis were not in their prime. <laughs> no, uh, they very much weren't. Um, their first victory at the Etihad since 1990. Um, last season saw City pull the double over the Eagles, winning 5-0 at the Etihad and 2-0 in Southers Park. Um, so all signs look to point to a comfortable City win and the margins are just too stacked in um, City's favour to put 
much on a win here. Um, seven out of the last ten meetings of these sides have seen more than two point five goals. That's seventy percent, Simon. And the last time I got seventy percent, yeah, I did it once. Um, last time I got seventy percent in a test, <laughs> I was pretty happy. Is that two thousand and eighteen too? Yeah. <laughs> um, so look, I think Man City are going to score over two and a half goals uh, quite comfortably. Uh, it's actually quite well priced for this fixture as well. It's coming in at four to five or 1.8. So that's what I'm going to go with here. That's a nice price for that. It is, I yeah. I agree. I'd have picked that myself. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea are going to Newcastle. Yeah, that's right. So let's close out part one by leaping to the northeast where Newcastle, awash with cash they can't spend yet, take on current league leaders Chelsea. Graham Jones opened his caretaker manager stint by masterminding, heavy air quotes there, a 1-1 draw at Crystal Palace in a performance that had all the hallmarks of his predecessor Steve Bruce. Newcastle's smash and grab point was scarcely deserved and Chelsea are unlikely to be quite as wasteful in front of goal as the Eagles were. Chelsea have taken 10 points from 12 on the road so far despite facing a taxing run of games which included... Contests against Arsenal, Liverpool, Tottenham and Brentford. Liverpool, in fact, are the only team to have scored a goal against a visiting Chelsea team this season. With Lukaku and Werner sidelined, however, the Blues are lacking a little stardust up top. So a low-scoring victory might be the order of the day here. You can grab even money or 2.0 on a Chelsea win and under four goals combination here. Oh, that's good. Nice. Thank you. So, OK, before we finish up part one, it's time... Oh yes, Ian. Ah. Don't look at me like this. It's the halftime quiz time. Okay, go on for it. I'm um, I'm raring to go today. All right. So last week, Ian provided an excruciating phobias quiz that gave me a terrific amount of anxiety. But this week, I've put together a shorter quiz, which I call the Empire Legume Guarana Quiz. I'm not repeating this <laughs> because. <laughs> wait, now I have an explanation. Because if you rearrange the letters in Empire Leg- Legume Guarana, you get Premier League anagram. That's oh, a hint. That's okay. right. It's an anagram quiz. Very good. So um, here's what here's how it goes. Um, I read out an anagram of a Premier League club, and you tell me which club it is. Sound easy? Uh, no, actually, it sounds quite difficult as somebody who can't spell. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I can. So <laughs> sometimes I'll use the words football club as part of the anagram, okay. just to flesh out some of the the team names, the shorter ones. Sure. Um. So yeah, I think there are seven total. Okay, go for it. Maybe more. Oh. I can't remember. (laughs) So are you ready to play the quiz? Go for it. All right, Ian. So the first one is Synthetic Cream. Um, Crystal Palace. Incorrect. It's Manchester City. The next one is Electric Yetis. Leicester City. Oh my God, that's correct. I did (laughs) not expect that. Well done. The Electric Yetis are also probably, uh, I've not checked this, but maybe a Swedish band. Uh, yeah, the, a lot of these sound like bad names, to be fair. Cool. Ready for your next one? This yeah. one definitely sounds like a bad name. Wet Dense Lunatic. Um, man, it's something United. Uh, is it West Ham United? No, that's re really unlucky. Newcastle United. God. Next one. In Hangover in Bloodbath. <laughs> it's happened to me before. Um... <laughs> I'm going to have to go with Wolverhampton. Oh, so close, but you're way off. It's Brighton and Hove Albion. There's not even a W in that, Ian. (laughs) (laughs) Man, this is hard to think so quickly on the spot, right? So next one, Callus Fat Leech Blob. It's childhood memories coming back to me already. (laughs) Um, Callus Fat Leech Blob. uh, Crystal Palace. Oh, right city, wrong team. Uh, Chelsea Football Club. That was a football club one. Now, this one is right up your alley. And the anagram is, I needed slut. <laughs> Liverpool. <laughs> no, it's Leeds United. Leeds United. I needed slut. Uh, I had a t-shirt. Okay, we've Damn. got another blob one for you. It's a lovelorn, fat, cute blob. A lovelorn, fat, cute lob. blob. 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 Mm-hmm. Oh, um, that was me, Valentine's Day 2013. Um, <laughs> I think it's going to be Liverpool. Football club. Oh, I, 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 I've, I've the other side that. of Merseyside. Ah, oh, ever then. Yeah, ever done football club. Just two more to go, and then you're done forever. Okay, stained hen rectum. A stained Sheffield United hen Premier League team. Oh, not former Premier League team. Stained hen rectum. What's a stained hen rectum? Who could that possibly be? United uh, Manchester United. Correct. Yes. Oh, that was really good. And yeah. there's only one more. Okay. You ready? Go for it. Old woman perverts raw hen. 
Sounds like a Daily Mail headline. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Where are the eggs? Um, uh, West Ham United. Wolverhampton Wanderers. So you, you got the W. Damn. But that's it. Yeah. I don't think you got uh, I, many, I, but I, I hope you had a good time. I did. It was fun. Awesome. That's the end of part one. Join us in part two where we will start off with Watford versus Southampton. We kick off part two with Watford's clash with Southampton at Vicarage Road on Saturday in the last of the 3pm kickoffs. Both clubs have been recording some wildly inconsistent results. Watford won 5-2 at Everton directly after losing 5-0 to Liverpool, while Southampton have taken points off Man City, West Ham and Manchester United. Yeah, so what I hear you say again, but they failed to beat Newcastle and Burnley. Mm -hmm. What does that say in terms of the betting markets? Well, I suppose the match result options are better left alone, I think, this week. Instead, we recommend you get yourself on the goals again, where you can grab both teams to score at 7-10 or 1.7. Watford haven't kept a single clean sheet since their promotion, while the Saints have secured just three shutouts in nine attempts. Neither defence looks cementitious enough. That's right, cementitious. That's a word and a half. Thank you. To keep the opposite attack out. So both teams to score is the way to go again here. Simple, but hopefully effective. Right, Ian, what you got up next for us in part two? Yeah, so it's the dinner time fixture. We've oh. got Spuds versus Mash. I mean Spurs versus <laughs> Manchester United. Um, <laughs> they were matched last week. Um, oh. What can I say about this there's fixture? There's been enough of these jibes. Like, it, look, You're allowed one more. Look, I mean, it just it feels like there's a lot riding on it, doesn't it? With um, two teams that were sitting sixth and seventh. Um, in fact, to be on- I'll be honest with you, Sam. I didn't really want to call this. Um, I know you don't want to go near a Man United game, particularly after last week and all, but um, you don't know which way this is going to swing. Mm. Um, it's really, really hard to know what kind of United team we're going to see here. Like Some reports um, suggest that some of the senior players are beginning to doubt the manager, but we're yet really to see any dissension in the coming on onto the field. To be fair, apart from that, maybe that Ronaldo walk off a few weeks ago. Remember that? Other than them playing absolutely terribly, yeah, exactly. Every game. So you can't help but think you know you'd have to start strong and make a mark on this game. But it'll depend on how much freedom Spurs are going to afford them. With one win in their last five games, Man United come into this fixture as a team probably not even deserving to be sitting in seventh. Yeah, I would agree. Um, unfortunately, yeah. Spurs, on the other hand, have had a flip of fortune in recent weeks. Uh, they are say they're pulling an Arsenal. <laughs> the two of them seem to have just climbed up the, tra- the table. Like, yeah, you know? that's true. Um, following a string of defeats in September to Palace, uh, Chelsea and Arsenal, they've seemingly began to turn a corner and now sit sixth in the league, having notched up victories against Villa and Newcastle in recent weeks, with Harry Kane also opening his account for the season. It's hard not to think about last October's game when United hosted Spurs and lost 6-1. Oh, come on. Um, I know, I know, but we have to bring it up. Man United did subsequently travel to London in April this year, and uh, they got some vengeance. They beat Spurs, I think it was 3-1 on the day. Played them off the park. They did, they did. Look, I feel like we're going to see goals from both teams here, but how it ends is anyone's guess. Over 2.5 goals is just a bit tight for my liking at 1.73. But if you go that extra mile and look at over 3.5 goals, there's, (sighs) there's a fantastic jump to 2.75. That is a whopper um, jump. So I think that's where the money should go. Now, we're off to Carroll Road next. Can't wait. Yeah, well, you might have to. Uh, <laughs> it's Norwich <laughs> versus Leeds. <laughs> um, look, I mean, both teams are struggling for form at the moment. Um, none more so than Norwich, really. The last few meetings between these two have been high scoring uh, with three plus goals. And uh, this is back in the championship where Pukki could actually find the back of the net. Anything and, goes in the championship. Well, that's is it. And Bielsa ball actually seemed to work. Um, things are a little different now, but I think both teams will look to this fixture as a golden opportunity to play a familiar opposition and to perhaps build some momentum. I actually think Norwich, with the home advantage, are going to have some confidence here and will believe they can get a result. Um, However, it has been since September the 18th um, when Norwich scored a goal in the league and Leaky Leeds might be the team to end this drought, you know. Um, Leeds, on the other hand, I think have been a little unfortunate in a couple of their recent games. Back in September, they were unfortunate not to get a draw against West Ham thanks to a Mikel Antonio late winner. Uh, He's on form at the moment, isn't he? He sure is. Yeah, and they've not been categorically trashed by a team since the 5-1 defeat to Man United at the start of the season. Look, 
we can say they lost 3 0 to Liverpool for sure. Look, Simon, anybody could lose uh, to Liverpool by three or more goals lately. Yeah, yeah, come on. Um, Leeds have yet to win away <laughs> this season, but I think this will be their opportunity to do so. I'm going to be positively bold here and go with Leeds to win. Oh, you naughty boy. And more than 2.5 goals to be scored at 11 to 5 or 3.2. That's a really, really big uh, It's price. a bold one. It is a bold one, but um, I, think it's a, I think it's a doer. What have you got next for us? Well, um, yeah, we finish up Sunday's games with the f- half four kickoff. It, um, it's between Aston Villa and West Ham when the sides okay. do battle to determine once and for all which shade of claret and blue reigns supreme. <laughs> nice, I'm colorblind. Oh, sorry, Ian. Sorry you can't share in my joy. The villains have lost three games on the spin since their 1 0 win at Old Trafford over Man United in late September. Oh my god, it's just bad news all around, isn't it? It is. But West Ham have catapulted themselves up to fourth spot thanks to a a surge of three wins from four. Tempted as I am to side with the Hammers at 29 to 20 here, I'm not sure I'm brave enough. And this might be a little boring, but yes, both teams to score again. Yes, yes, yes. But it's available at 4 to 6 or 1.67, which looks quite a safe route to take. Mm. Villa have scored on all but one of their league games this season Chelsea are the only team to keep them out so far a record mirrored exactly by West Ham eerie or just a thing Uh, it looks like there'll be a few goals there so maybe hopefully Mm. but if you're on the lookout for something a little juicier then backing the aforementioned Mikhail Antonio to score any time is 13 to 8 or 2.63 Antonio tends to score in bursts and he ended a three-game dry spell by netting the winner against Spurs last weekend. So it might be a good time to get on his little individual momentum burst. Yeah. If that's a thing. I don't even know if it is. He was bursting with confidence anyway, Simon. So I'm bursting with other things. Okay. Yeah, so we're off to Wolves versus Everton at 8 o'clock. Um, so Bruno Lage's men welcome Benitez boys to Molyneux on Monday night. Everton beat Wolves 1-0 in the second last game of last season thanks to a Richarlison goal in the uh, second half early. I think it was 47 minutes or something like that to be precise. Um, Wolves were a bit unlucky not to get something out of this game to be honest with Traore being denied the chance of the game in the first half. The result meant Everton did the double on Wolves for the first time. The Toffees will be hoping this form continues against Wolves, having had a string of poor results in their last few outings in the league. I think we were all shocked to see them seemingly implode towards the end of the Watford game last week and lose 5-2. Benitez looked stunned, as were his players, and I think, frankly, everyone in the stadium as well. Um, So it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of reaction the players give, because they were already on the back foot coming into that game as well. Uh, aside from the 1-1 draw against Leeds last weekend, Wolves have began stringing victories together and slowly climbing the table. You mentioned them flying under the radar in last week's episode, Simon, and I kind of have to agree. Uh, a win here could see them leapfrog Everton into the top 10. I think basing it on recent form, Wolves, I feel, are going to come away with the three points here. Everton have only won one game away so far this season. I still think they have a goal in them, but Wolves have the momentum of recent games in their favour. Um, a bet that's caught my eye here is a Wolves win and both teams to score. It's coming in at 4-1 or 5.0. Was that the biggest one so far? I think so. That's so big. Like, I'm sorry, Wolves... There's no like, need to apologise, Ian. I, it's an absolute monster of a prize. I think it's a great bet. Yeah. Um, and that's what I have, Simon. Well, that's a fantastic way to close off the weekend's games, I think. Yeah. Save the best till last. Well, look, let's see what happens. That's it. Well, I think we've delivered a truckload of cracking betting options this weekend. Um, I think a- so, Simon. Any particular game you're looking forward to tuning in for this weekend? Um, yeah, I think really. I'm, I'm looking forward. To, I'm interested to see the Leicester versus Arsenal game, if I'm honest. I think they're two teams that are struggling for that consistency I think that's going to be a cracking game to watch and obviously as a Liverpool fan I'll be glued to the recliner um, shouting for a beer watching that one as well shouting for a beer get me my beer Liverpool have scored again (laughs) <laughs> you were, who do you shout at for beer I need I need someone like that in my life anyone who'd listen to me Simon and um, what about you any games that you kind of have your eye on yeah well I suppose out of morbid fascination I'll be looking forward to Tottenham versus Man United on Saturday evening You're glutton for punishment yeah I think so look at this stage it looks like it can kind of only go one way disaster awaits um, I know Tottenham's manager is under pressure too but mm. look this could be always swan song wow yeah. is this a stay of execution Probably. Possibly not. Who knows? Well, 
Neither well, look, I mean, it's never a good sign when I get the backing of a board, is it? 99% <laughs> sure he's out the door before, yeah. well, probably around the time of the international break. Yeah, okay. Bye, Ollie. Bye, Ollie. And look, I think that means we say goodbye to everyone else. Yeah, that's it. We're going to sign off with that. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. Mm. We really appreciate you taking the time to listen. And make sure to check out Odds Profit on Facebook and on their official website for their latest expert tips. And most importantly of all, remember to gamble responsibly. Talk to you next week. See you guys.